Welcome to Supply Chain Now, the voice of global supply chain. Supply Chain Now focuses on the best in the business for our worldwide audience, the people, the technologies, the best practices, and today's critical issues, the challenges and opportunities. Stay tuned to hear from those making global business happen right here on Supply Chain Now. All right, good morning, everybody. Scott Luton and Greg White with you here on Supply Chain Now. Welcome to today's show. Greg, we're broadcasting once again from Connections 2021 down here in Miami, Florida. Do you know how Bobby Bowden would pronounce Miami? Miami. That's right, just like that. Does he get to pronounce anymore? Is he still a coach? I, well, he, he passed away not too long ago. We, we can take that from the top if you'd like. Yes, but, that uh, would... Rest his soul. Yes. Uh, certainly made his mark on college football. But we digress because we're down here in Miami with our friends at Omnia Partners, right? And they've been hosting an incredible conference, Connections 2021. What's been your one favorite thing thus far? I, the energy is really incredible here. I mean, there are so many people providing solutions and looking for solutions. And I think the discovery that I've had is the breadth of solutions that Omnia Partners provides. I mean, we're talking about staffing and sourcing and all kinds of things that I would have never thought would right. have been part of it, right? So. You're helping companies uh, break through old walls and new walls when it comes to growth and innovation yeah. success. So, with all of that said, we've got two incredible guests with us here today. As much as we enjoyed our conversation with Tim and Barb uh, yesterday, as it were, at least in the production landscape, oh. today we have Rob Stofko. Managing Director of MRO with Omnia Partners. Rob, how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm great, doing great. Great to see you. You know, you know, you got a great guest when he shows up with a couple of good barbs or two. You know what yep. I mean? Yeah. He, he kind of did his homework. Yeah, that's right. He knows us. Maybe he's CIA. Well, you know, we're going to talk about one of the connections there momentarily. I don't. Oh, I don't want right. to get out. Yeah, that's uh, right. Get out in front of our skis too much. But joining. Rob is his partner in crime, Steve Larada, Partner Development Vice President of MRO and Facilities, also with Omnia Partners. Steve, uh, Steve, how you doing? Fantastic. Great to be here. Yeah. Great to have you. Great to have you. Now, you know, you ever get the impression you can talk about all kinds of things with this dynamic yeah. duo, but we got to yeah. talk about. Uh, I feel we're like talk if about, we picked golf, the episode would be twice. <laughs> golf as long. would be right. good. <laughs> right, but you know, before we get to the the uh, heavy hitting, heavy lifting stuff. Let's get to know our friends a little better. Now, I understand doing our homework and due diligence that we kind of have the Crockett and Tubbs here. Oh. Because they do a ton of work together. Oh, look at that. Yes. Oh, and they, they look Oh, because we're in Miami. Sharp. Right. Yeah, I get, oh. yeah, I get that. <laughs> so, yeah. Rob, I want to start with you. Kidding aside, uh, I want to get to know you a little better, so tell us about yourself. Yeah, so I'm uh, new with Omnia Partners, just came over the first of the year and uh, in a role as managing director from a vertical perspective, uh, helping to bring connectivity between our suppliers, our sales teams, and our members in the MRO categories. And the setup to that is really the last 20 plus years in uh, 15 with George Pacific and then prior with Kimberly Clark was in roles exclusively really selling and managing through the MRO channels okay. and calling on Fortune 1000 companies and I've had the privilege of really working with this guy next to me yep. for you know the last 10 plus years. Wow, we were okay. both in the same. We went through the great toilet paper shortage together <laughs> <laughs> at, at Georgia. 2020. We, we yes. really did. Yep. It was it was an amazing fun time times, for both of us. Fun times. Yeah. It was an amazing. You're time. probably not the most popular people in your household well, at that moment. We weren't. <laughs> no, we weren't. We, so all right. So before I jump over to Steve, give me one fun fact about Rob. Yeah, well, one fun fact, I have two grown children now, one uh, a, a Georgia grad, and Scott, as you know, the other one I brought up is a South Carolina grad, uh, and he he majored in supply chain and management operations, and awesome. I call it the house divided. I, I'm a, you know, uh, a college football fan, and so I, I learned this year with the setup to the game a couple of weeks ago, Right. hey, house divided to both my children, please. <laughs> play nice, right. um, fun, uh, fun, loving, free-spirited, and a lot of passion about the work that I and do. And despite the results, they still love each other. Great family. Yeah. Daniel Stofko, if you hear us, 
uh, fellow alum of University of South Carolina. And I bet, and so big shout out to Daniel, but also I wonder if we ever had a class with Steve Rudnick, uh, Rudnicki, who is an adjunct professor. Do you know Steve? I don't, but we will check with okay, him on Okay, let's that. do it. Yep. So Daniel, appreciate what you do. We're going to have to put our finger on the pulse of what you're doing in your career yeah. uh, later on. Okay. So Steve, let's get to know Steve yes. Larod a little bit better. So Steve, tell us about yourself. It's interesting, my, my background, <laughs> unfortunately or fortunately, is pretty similar to Rob's. Uh, 26 years with Georgia Pacific, various roles, marketing, sales, sales management, product management, training, a lot of different roles at GP over the years. And so, uh, you know, like I said, we lived through the, uh, the great toilet paper shortage of last year and had some fun with it and got through it okay. And I've been here at Omnia Partners now for roughly 10 months okay and really my role here is to lead our category strategy for MRO and facilities aggregating the best of our suppliers and bringing them to our members in a in a, in a very uh, sophisticated way well so uh, or I was gonna ask I was gonna follow-up question since they've referenced the great TP shortage yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, we never thought yeah. we whoever would have thought we'd be here but um, so Steve both of y'all play golf but you're also pickleball which is like yeah, it is uh, overcoming. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's overcoming it the country, right? Yeah, pickleball courts going up everywhere. It yeah. is. There's a pickleball racket shortage forthcoming. Ooh. That's yeah. what I hear. Really? Yep. Yeah. Supply yeah. chain. When not you, enough. You know, when you get rackets. yeah, when you get my it's age. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When you get my age, you know, it's hard to run around a tennis court. So pickleball is a smaller court, smaller paddle, easier on your body. It's all good. I it's love funny it. you say that because you know we have courts around where we live and we see a lot of young kids yeah, I know. doing it. Yeah. I mean there is a lot of nuance to that game. I haven't tried it yet myself, huh. but we'll have to we'll have to see I, what I you see got. You wanting to play for money. So we'll let me get a few weeks <laughs> under my belt. And, <laughs> Well, Andy Griffith joke. Aunt B is not involved in the no. game of pick a ball. She's not no. like not the that I'm aware. Of. Okay, but right. you never know. She only makes the worst pickles of all time. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, we'll see your pick a ball skills later. Okay, so let's talk about uh, level setting. There's no shortage of supply chain challenges right now. In fact, just in our little fun four or five minute intro, we have probably alluded to seven of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, and that's the supply chain nerds in, in us all. We right. use that term very, um, um, in, 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 with a lot of love. So, Rob, I want to start with you. Yeah. Beyond some of the things we've mentioned, talk about some of the great supply chain challenges we're all fighting through right now. Yeah, so, you know, really this all started back in March of 2020 with right. the pandemic. And, um, you know, it's really been a springboard effect that what companies, manufacturers took for granted, a lot of things were exposed in the last 18 months. And so, um, you know, you, we have bottlenecks right now with product trying to get out and get shipped to places, ports. We have availability. And I'll take, you know, where I came from. Manufacturers are being pressed to produce. And in a lot of instances, they're having to rationalize based on packaging materials, uh, raw materials that if they were producing 10 different color widgets, right. they might only be able to produce two right now. Mm, right. And so, and then on top of that has been this, and I know folks earlier from Omnia Partners talked about the uh, spiral effect from the labor shortages that have been directly affected with the uh, pandemic. And so, you know, bottlenecks, availability raw materials list could go on and then on top of that labor that even when products are getting shipped to distribution points or ports right now there are not enough drivers to right. get the container ships out of the out of the port so yes. it's know. like a family reunion <laughs> would y'all ever go have a family reunion for thanksgiving and not only you had your core family, but you had your first and second and third cousins. Everybody was there. This is like a terrible family reunion yeah. with all these related challenges, right? Yeah. We can't break through. It's, I got in a fight with my third it's like cousin. Every, it's like every one of them is your crazy Uncle Bob, right? Every one, one of these things. And I do have an Uncle Bob. Bob do you have, yeah. What's interesting, though, the, you know, the, the labor shortage is amplifying everything, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is. I mean, you used to be able to take maybe take some downtime on a, on a line. You, maybe you could get overtime, maybe you could get temp workers, whatever the case may be. Right. Today's world, you don't have the luxury of that type of flexibility. Yeah. So you gotta be a lot more precise in your supply chain and your planning and 
your suppliers and the simplicity that you're looking for, I think. I, I, yep. Two words there, precision and simplicity, mm -hmm. I think are really critical. You alluded to that, and that is we saw GP did it, right? We saw GP cut from like eight or 11 screws of toilet paper down to two or three. Right? Correct. And GP saw, and Georgia Pacific. Sorry, so Georgia Pacific. Yeah, yeah. Level yeah. set, level set. Uh, Technically, yeah, if you're in Atlanta, everybody <laughs> yeah, knows exactly. GP. That's yep. where you've got to actually spell it out there. Exactly. Um, but it, we also saw a number of companies changing the product itself. Right. Toilet yeah, paper we're, was one of them right. where they went from you know a roll five and a half inches to five inches wide so they could get more off with the limited resources that Correct. they had. Right? Yeah. So you speak in Rob's language. Rob, you want to add something yeah. there? Yeah, no, I mean, it, 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 if you start there at the simplest, most mundane, thinking of a household or away from home product of right. bath tissue, but that example you could multiply across so many industries right. of the you know the demand like these huge waves spikes in demand mm -hmm. that have created just in literally insanity that manufacturers some responded a lot quicker than others yeah, right. but having to rationalize and then down the supply chain then you have confused buyers customers right. Um, you know, and look, I don't have a crystal ball. I mean, it feels like, you know, I, I would hope we're in the seventh or sixth or seventh inning by now. You're right. Um, I wish. Uh, you know, but, 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 you know, you're right. I, you know, yeah. I don't think it's going to turn overnight. And so, yeah. you know, we had talked about really the theme of mitigation and yes. mitigating, right? That. Yeah. I think there are a number of things that companies can be doing today, certainly through a GPO to to help alleviate or mitigate as best they can, where in the past, you know, you'd be able to go it alone more time, and do things right? on your own. Yeah. Today, in the environment and the complexities, uh, you don't want to be going it alone. And that, that is an excellent point. Uh, because, you know, we talk about it. It keeps coming back around, doesn't well, it? It does, but in that same yeah. breath, we're talking about speed, we're talking about having expertise, we're talking about uh, all these, really, uh, this, there's a lot of common challenges that we've had historically, but some of these new challenges where there's not a go-to book for how to navigate through it, and you better have that seated really in the C-suite these days yeah. to help you navigate through. Just simple. Well, we were talking with Barb Sexton and Tim Holland about right. access. You know, one of the things that is important is access, right? So many companies, they don't know how to get the resources that yep. they sourced internally before, right? They don't know yeah. who, do, who else does it out there. And having kind of a pool, pool area like a GPO, right, is a great opportunity to go, Here's five options for pick a pick a product or yeah. pick a, a service, Which, right? Yeah. And yep. what's worked, you know, right. what's worked. Already vetted. Right. I mean, to me, that's that's the part that I love. Steve, but the you know the the other lens, other than just availability, that we're trying to get folks to look through is this this concept called TCO. Yep. Or total cost of ownership. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So did, I I like, your, did I steal your thunder? No. 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 We <laughs> want to segue to the yes. table, but before we just to just to double check. His, we got to give him. Does he get a silver button? Badge. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. He gets but a prize. We do. We want to. We want to focus on TCO, but but I just want to just check in one more time with both y'all. Any other challenge? Y'all want to throw out there that we'll be referencing through the rest of the conversation? Are we ready to go to TCO? Yeah, I think we're ready, ready to move right, forward. Was that it. really is where the problem solving solution side of trying to mitigate and fix as best you can yeah. Wonderful. what's going to be a challenging environment? These guys really have been there and done that. Well, <laughs> yeah. Steve even yeah. knows about segues on we make. They should have a radio show. <laughs> yeah, we should. That's have right. <laughs> the Rob and Steve show. All right. So, Rob, I want to come back to you. Uh, yep. You were talking about mitigation, and of course, Steve's talking about TCO. How can effect an, an effective uh, total cost of ownership strategy help with mitigation, and, and, and how can it help organizations in general? Yeah, so let me first say, when, when we talk about TCO and total cost of ownership, you know, price is one very small component of the equation, and so, right. Looking at the complexity, and I'm on the MRO side, so maintenance, repair, operation supplies that manufacturing facilities need to use and keep their machines running, is looking at so many different elements. And, I, and I'm glad Barb and Tim took my, you know, I had notes here that 
access is critical. So, and Steve can talk to the breadth of partner suppliers we have, right? But those suppliers yeah. have unique, unique capabilities and they're differentiated, but they have um, solutions that can reduce consumption, reduce costs, and do a number of other things besides procuring at a lowest piece right. price. Um, and so as we work with our partner suppliers and bring them into the mix with our members, it's helping those members understand they might have been doing some things in the past a certain way and they got by. Right. In today's environment, if they are not leveraging the core capabilities of especially the, the strategic suppliers that we bring to the table and their solutions, they're missing mm. those additional opportunities to bring ultimate efficiencies into their operation. Yeah. So I think it's I'm funny because if, if you know supply chain and procurement are very related in a lot of ways nice. and very common, especially in the MRO yeah. world. I mean, it's a big part of keeping the supply chain True. moving, keeping, yeah. the, keeping the lines moving, keeps the supply chain moving. So I think there are a lot of overlapping problems. And one of the things that we've seen in supply chain, and I think you're alluding to this in procurement as well, people focused on cost, as if procurement was only a cost minimization exercise. And it's really a risk balancing exercise, right? You can have a less low cost on paper that costs you less throughout the company because maybe this supplier is more reliable or they fulfill at a higher rate or their lead times are shorter or whatever. But, but yeah. even think through the lens of the worker, right? If you think through the lens of the worker, and we know we have less workers now, right. the impact of the supply chain on the worker in terms of just having a simple, a simpler supply chain, products, parts, where, where they're needed at the right place at the right time, yeah. it's critical because you just don't have the luxury you did before in terms of having, again, we're talking about overtime and flex time and things of that nature. And guess what? When you have churn and workers, what are some of the impacts? Less efficiency, right. uh, compliance, curves, safety yeah. issues, all kinds of things within a plant can happen if your supply chain isn't crisp and precise. Yeah. And I think, again, to Ralph's point, we have the supplier base, we have a group of suppliers aggregated to provide that value to our members. Is there something that you all do that helps mitigate that kind of learning curve that threatens safety and speed and efficiency? I mean, is there something? Our suppliers definitely do. We have, yeah. you know, our suppliers definitely do in terms of how they implement programs and how they bring solutions onto the plant floor relative to safety and different VMI solutions with managing inventory and yeah. things of that nature. So yes, absolutely. That's powerful stuff because you're right. It's hard enough to get people. We've already talked about how hard it is to keep people. And when you have to train people, you lose so much productivity. Yeah. And after you've done an enormous hunt, trying to find people now, that you, you want to make it as easy for them to be as productive and be as satisfied in their work as possible, as soon as possible. So just to kind of dovetail on what Steve was talking about, and just, and I'm making some categorical statements across our supplier um, partnerships that we have. In today's environment, in the global economy, and I'll just say the partners that we have are selected for various reasons. We have a contracting process, we have a partner development process, and folks like myself, SME right. process, but the investment that, that certain suppliers make, inventory, warehousing, technology, is critical for our members as they're making decisions. And I'm not trying to step on the small business, right. but the small local and regional supplier that still has a 50% share of the total MRO market today, as crazy as it seems, those local suppliers and regional suppliers don't have the scale, the global purchasing power, the millions of square feet of warehouse mm -hmm. and trucks and distribution. And so we unleash that, if you want to call it that, sure. and, and partner mm -hmm. and attach that to our members. Now, things as we know aren't perfect, but that can help alleviate 
you know, the shortfalls right. that customers are going to be seeing. So. Well, you know, one of the things we see there time and time again is uh, when in the middle of a global crisis is a tough time to build relationships and trust, right? Yeah. Right. So I heard two things. Too late that, to make friends. Yeah, two things. <laughs> so not only is it um, not only is it currently in a GPO or an Omnia Partners or set of relationships um, to be able to even bring certain options to a uh, to a customer or a member. But beyond that, they're already been vetted and there's a relationship in place which will impact the speed to how you can act on any of these options, right? Absolutely. And so just again, I you know think about kind of this uh, cross-functional capabilities that we're building internally here that there's a contracting element. Those are the folks that vet and work with the particular supplier. Steve's on the partner development side, there's a subset of folks that are managing those particular relationships to extract value right. and cohesiveness within our organization. And then you've got marketing, you've got sales, and you know, it's it's a tight circle when it's done properly right. and that's what kind of how we're approaching yeah. things. Yep. And, um, and and almost every functional area is involved. It's holistic. Yeah, so, and I say that in that companies, if you think about the time and energy that we spend to bring that solution to the marketplace, for a Fortune 1000 company, they would have to have a lot of people working in siloed function areas right. where they can look to a GPO that's do doing a lot of that groundswell work. And they, yeah. can, and they can divert that cost down to yeah. the production floor with people actually making stuff and producing stuff for the company versus having folks chase down tailspin. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It sounds like you, having heard your history, it sounds like you have a first-hand knowledge of this point. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I mean, is this, I mean, is this, the, yeah. I mean, have you guys kind of experienced that? Absolutely. And I'm curious, as you talk about TCO, when you think about TCO and how yeah. people think of it, what is the, is, is there a biggest aspect of total cost of ownership? I don't ownership think that there is at all. It's, I think it's in the eyes of the beholder. But the, the one thing, I, to your point, that people overlook, and I'm glad it's a great segue, because the other part of my role here is facilities. Yeah. And you start thinking about the piece price mentality of, even going back to the toilet paper world, right? Yeah. Buying the cheapest toilet paper. Well, guess what? Workers, the perception that workers have when they enter a facility is going to be created by what's purchased, the quality of, of the amenities that are purchased within a facility, how clean it is, the hygiene of the facility. If you're trying to get workers, you need to be thinking about TCO in a right. bit of a different lens yeah. than you have in the past about keeping your workers on site, keeping them happy, and keeping them coming back. Yeah. That's what I would tell you. Yeah. Absolutely. I think of that every time I go to an Airbnb. I'm like, uh, the, the towels that they have out or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's just every aspect of that. So, is the experience. let me give, like, I think an example folks could correlate with. Yeah. And so we've had this huge swell demand for PPE, okay? And years ago, large companies would go and buy containers of gloves from Malaysia and different places, right? right? And they'd bring that inventory over and it would sit in places. Well, they've already, they've already paid for the inventory. It's like sunk cost. But they might be buying six months worth, worth of inventory. So think in today's environment that yep. with, with PPE, that um, from a total cost of ownership, that companies today, right, across multiple industries have a high consumption need for that for a lot of different reasons but if they're just focused on the piece price and I've, I'm on the phone with large companies all the time think about it this way they're finding a pair of goggles that's maybe five cents cheaper per goggle but they're putting it in an environment where there's no control of the usage and the consumption and the tracking. Right. So I can present to them through a partner supplier a concept of a controlled dispensing, right? whether it's vending or VMI different, like scanning to the point where they know how much yeah. each employee is using. Right. And we're finding double digit savings and customers eyes are being opened just saying hey you're looking at this maybe through a, the wrong lens today right. yeah. that the old days of throwing 
PPE in a storeroom where workers were grabbing, grabbing what they needed, they needed yeah. you can't operate that way today. And you want to take the right product, right, from a health hazard and all that, but you want to put it into a controlled system. And there's multiple ways you can do that. Right. But I'm taking like the most simple example of people came in looking for a low cost on a PPE item, but if they're not deploying it in the right way, their total cost of ownership can be double right. versus an alternative solution that has a controlled dispensing a great summary. Yep. Of, of it. It's yeah. got to be a system that works, a system that is a good fit, yeah. and, a, and, and also is a good fit for the enterprise, right? Yes. Not just one operation here, or, or it's got to be a good fit for the enterprise. Steve, you're going to add something to Rob's point there, maybe? No, I said it's a great summary. I mean, you, it, you know, the, the, the description of total cost of ownership in terms of, you know, taking, taking a look at the piece price, but ultimately how it's deployed, how it's used, the impact to the worker, the impact to safety. Cost of capital. And you know what? The simplicity of, you know, you're talking about safety goggles. Well, a lot of companies will have a customized safety goggle for like every employee. Well, guess what? In today's world, you can't do that anymore. You got to start getting down to the bare bones of how many safety glasses you need, how many gloves you need, how many yeah. earplugs you need. Right. Otherwise, you're going to have obsolete in inventory if you can even if you can even get it if you can even get it. Yeah, that's a it's really going to be important. in the wrong spot. You know, whatever the case may be. Yeah. So many different directions uh, to take with TCO alone. We haven't even gotten into some of the, the, the new sourcing opportunities and conversations that are being had. Um, but let, let's keep going down the path of, um, of where GPOs bring value. And we don't have necessarily have to stay in this TCO uh, segment of the conversation. Clearly, with y'all's background, your firepower yeah, that you own the front really end, can you imagine? From where you came from, what, yeah. was there anything that surprised you going to a GPO that, you know, at Kimberly Clark or at Georgia Pacific where you went, how did we not see this? <laughs> oh. I think it's the tagline, power, access, and trust, right? It's like this big, it's, it's the power of this place, and the, I mean, if you just walk the floor here, the suppliers right. here are like best-in-class suppliers. Yeah. And power, yeah, access, trust. trust. And people yeah. are all in on that, too. These, I mean, our suppliers are all in. They're not, like, beating around the edges and stuff. They're all in with us and our members, and uh, the future looks right here i mean in terms where's of where's our shades yeah, well, yeah. 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 <laughs> we are in miami children of the 80s uh power access, access trust. trust we have our episode title there we go. folks i'll be surprised nice. how difficult it is to come up with a podcast title yeah wow. no and just to elaborate on what steve was saying that um you know from a gpo perspective and and again you know been here like steve nine ten months and really acclimating to you know just a different um, conceptually of, of, you know, how things connect. Previously, I would say, in prior roles, very supportive of the type of work that GPOs do, which is leveraging their size and scale, right, right to bring um, the, the best value for members. And so today, you know, as Steve said, I, you know, access is critical. Um, and I just say, like, we're not, I just think of, since Steve and I have started here, we've had over a hundred folks come on board um, we're not sitting still we're looking at new categories we're looking at where unmet needs are potentially not being filled right and so where we are today we've got six main yep. you know vertical categories um, we're building out this kind of category right. specialization to it and bringing in people like Steve and myself and then others in other categories with industry knowledge so and the access to the breadth of the part number of partners, and I should know this, um, I don't know what the exact number is, but we have a it's couple a lot. hundred. Yeah, um, a lot. You know, just in MRO. Well, you well across all of yeah. Omnia okay. partners, right? And then, it, and then it's really working with the members to understand where their pain points are mm. today. So I know folks were up contingent labor and, and all of that staffing. Right. We've got a whole suite of solutions there. and so. That's all the work for companies today. They don't have, well, you know, if it's not their core capability, they don't want to be investing a lot of time and energy to figure out a lot of right. these solutions. The juice so isn't I, worth the squeeze. Yeah, there yeah. You so you that's go. a, you know, that's been a, a, a big kind of eye opener for me in the last 10 months. 
I appreciate you sharing. One of our favorite questions around here is that eureka moment. What's that eureka moment? And he, you've kind of shared one, Rob. So, Steve, i got to come to you. What, what's one surprise maybe or eureka well, moment you've had? I, I'll tell you, you know, coming from a manufacturer like Georgia Pacific, and I, I would say other manufacturers, the perception of a GPO is at its price. Yeah. That's the exactly. perception. But when you get in here and you look at the suppliers we have and you look at the programs we put together, to Rob's point earlier, price is a very small piece of the solution right. we're bringing to the customer. And until you get in the building here, until you start understanding the value that this place brings, a GPO, you you know, the perception could be price, but there's so much more. Yeah. And quite frankly, that's that's kind of what we're all here to do. So I've had I've had an aha moment. I mean, seriously, in, over the months talking about procurement generally right. and then GPOs more specifically and then with Omnia Partners, you know, we knew Kevin, he's your CEO, yes. when he was at Georgia Pacific um, and through the Point A uh, yes. initiative that Georgia Pacific yep. had. Yep. I, did, I can tell you that I did not get what a GPO was or what the value is. And I think to me, one of the things we talked about with Kevin and yep. with Paul Noble from Ferris yesterday was the value to small and medium businesses, right? I mean, so you you, you just access, hit the nail on the head. Yeah. You know, to where the sweet spot is for those companies that mid-size, mid-market, whatever yeah. you want to classify them, that don't have the the depth of talent and HR resources across right. their organization. Um, G, uh, GPOs can be deployed in a very opportunistic way. And I was going to make a comment on the price piece and all this is for companies and members not to sell yourself short by having that that narrow lens of a price that I'm looking at XYZ GPO for a price yep. because you're you're really missing what the overall flavor is, which is we're going to have a competitive price, but here are all the other things really that you want to start taking advantage of and embarking on and installing across your organization. Yeah. So one of the things that, that some of what you shared there, Rob, makes me think of, and certainly our earlier conversation with Tim and Barb, um, is that all the ways y'all are bringing value as Omnia partners without sending invoices. I mean, you know, the conversations, right. the, hey, by the way, I was chatting with uh, a fellow member or a successful organization. This is how they're tackling it. Um, you know, that market intel sharing, bench market sharing, you know, that trusted counsel, that is invaluable. And you know, that brings it back to relationships, right? Relationships that matter, trusted relationships to get through very challenging, uh, unforeseen, and uh, incredibly unique times, right? Undoubtedly, and I think the, you know you you spoke to power earlier, Steve, and I think power isn't just pricing power. It's the cumulative power of your member community mm -hmm. to say, we're even though my little company does this much business, if Omnia does this much business with this with this vendor, we get all that, that power, right? all of that attention, all of that leverage with that supplier. Yep. That's as important as the price, especially price. today, uh. where you might need to be at the top of the shipping list when you want stuff delivered, right? I think that's incredibly powerful and then of course the pre-built trust i like that the pre-built trust of knowing because man that is I, we can tell you firsthand we are constantly vetting suppliers There's, and vendors for services mm -hmm. and things like that and ha, ha, the power of a reference is incredible the power of a highly vetted reference mm -hmm. is completely invaluable because mm -hmm. it it allows you to go so it's worked for the other X number of members here, yep. right? There's an inherent trust that can be provided there. Yep. And of course, we know you guys have a really strong vetting process for all of your suppliers. We do. Um, I think that's, it just takes you to the level, it, allow, it levels the playing field for the small business with the, you know, the fortune class enterprises. And you know what it gives you? What's it, that? It gives you a PAT for you and me. <laughs> Oh, that's power, access, power access, and, and trust, trust. Oh, right? That's great. Um, all right. All right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got dad jokes, guys. All right. So um, we got a couple extra minutes. In a second, we're going to make sure folks know how to connect with you both. Uh, you know, these types of conversations, uh, we're scratching the surface in 45 minutes or even an hour. 
it, it, for our listeners out there across global supply chain, really across global business, is there anything that uh, we like to say, say it louder for folks in the back? Yeah. If there's one idea, one key takeaway from this conversation here that they need to make sure they leave it with it stenciled between the ears, what would that be? Yeah, so I've got like two, or, and you must have been reading oh, my great. last notes here. Wonderful. Um, can't stress enough the, um, the need to build deeper supplier relationships, and that's to extract the maximum value out of that particular supplier. Yeah. Um, visibility, and I say visibility with technology and ERP systems, if you're operating in a gray area, you know it now, creating and adopting to systems that give you really good visibility, um, manage and prepare for the long haul. And I just say that right now. Yeah. And then manage expectations. And ultimately, my last thought is, you got to be nimble, you got to be flexible, you got to be adaptive, and you know, those are Expect my only... The walls to start caving and in then, and be ready for it, but, right? Yeah, but deeper, and I just stress that, the deeper supplier relationships um, that maybe were taken for granted in the past, um, now is the time that you want to peel that back, and we can help with that. I love that. That's, that's, that's a wonderful four-step approach to uh, move it in the right direction, is yeah. what I heard. Yeah, And no one other quick call out there is um, when you talk about building deeper supplier relationships, one of the things that comes to my mind is going beyond when you have to communicate, when you have to make that phone call, when it's a problem, it's, it's, it's ongoing communication about a lot of the positive stuff or a lot, a lot of new ideas, innovation, product development. And those are what really I'm hearing when it comes to those deeper, meaningful relationships. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. All right, Steve, same question. I would say the biggest thing that I can articulate is we have world-class suppliers and they bring tremendous value across the supply chain. And a lot of the services and programs they have are no, are no charge or free. Use them. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Use your resources. Use your resources. <laughs> yeah, but it's funny. We all have we all have UGA grads, right? Yeah, yes, we so, do. And yeah. I can't tell you the number of times that I have told my daughter that when she yeah. calls me with a struggle, I'm like, "Well, don't they have an office for that?" Yes, right. Yeah. Use your resources. I think that's really powerful. I agree. I agree. Okay, so Greg, I'm gonna put the tables on you here. Good, Rob, no, oh, I thought you had something. You, no, it's like a it's like a fountain that keeps on. I was going to remind you guys, I'm in a house divided. So yeah, that's true. I'm a South Carolina. They, and, they can use their resources in South Carolina. Carolina as well. I mitigate during the holidays. Uh, I love it. I love it. Uh, all right, so Greg, before we circle back and make sure folks know how to connect with Rob and Steve here, what's been your favorite component of today's conversation? I, the, the, I think the power, access, and trust aspect of it, and I think the last thing that you said, Rob, about deep supplier relationships, and it's hard, as again, as an SMB to have a deep supplier relationship that can get you through the kind of trying times that we've just seen, but imagine if it's you and 300 of your best friends. Mm -hmm. So in the business that I've done, I've worked a lot with co-ops. I've worked with Ace Hardware. I've worked with Piggly Wiggly. I've worked with a number <laughs> of those kind of co-op, REI and those companies like that, yep. where they, they that co-op organization provides so much value to all of the individual dealers. This is a similar type situation, right. except you all don't have to have Ace Hardware over the door. You can have anything over your door and still have the power to work with those, those vendors, have a deep, deep relationship, a gr more deep relationship than any single supplier and customer relationship could ever have. You get to leverage that, mm. and I think that's probably the most powerful thing that I've seen mm. from this particular conversation. Hey, next time we need a mic so you can drop it, right? Hi. That, well put, well put. Um, and I got to, you know, my brain, my very simple brain goes to one of the things you shared there, Piggly Wiggly. Yeah, boy. A little factoid of the pig. You know, the Piggly Wiggly was the first supermarket, the one in Tennessee. I'm not sure what town the first one was in. But it was the first gro true grocery store that allowed cons um, customers to go and pick their own products instead of giving a list to a, uh, to a clerk. Cap, yeah. That started yeah. with the pig. 
That was innovation. before, that was huh. just after the general store era. It's right. kind, it's kind right. of going right. back the other way now. It is, it is yeah, going it back is. the other way. Yeah, That's it is. Point, right. you, Steve. Except people yeah. don't even go to the store now. Right. <laughs> These folks don't miss a beat, old Rob yeah. and Steve here. Okay, <laughs> let's make sure our listeners that, that I'm sure are going to enjoy this conversation uh, can connect with you both. And Rob, I want to start with you. How can they connect with Rob for all the fountain of goodness here? Yeah, so I would say probably the best way would be you can find me out on LinkedIn, um, Robert Stofko. Um, you could send me a message through there. Or you could also send me a message through the uh, Omnia Partners website. Awesome, which is omniapartners.com. It's that Correct. simple. Yep. Folks, if you want to uh, make it really easy, we're after the one click here. So we're going to have your LinkedIn profile on the episode page. We'll have Omnia Partners on the episode page. Steve will have your LinkedIn, whether you like it or not. Just kidding. Uh, on the episode <laughs> I page. Think you guys have it figured out. I like it. <laughs> you know what I mean? How can folks connect with you, Steve? Same way they can with Rob on LinkedIn or omniapartners.com. Wonderful. It or is. what's your club? Where do you play golf? Uh -oh. I'm not saying because people <laughs> want to be try, try to come in and be member guys. <laughs> what's your handicap? People going to invite you to their member guests? Oh, we'll just yeah. figure that out. Oh, yeah. man. If, if I tell you what my handicap is, I, I can't sandbag anymore. Well, mm -hmm. hey, no one's listening. It's just us. <laughs> yeah, it's just the four of us. 13. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I said that was the last question. I got one more. Yeah. Uh, especially being newer members of the Omnia Partners team. So this is our first time at Connections 2021, right? Yeah. We've had a blast so yeah. far. Yeah. Uh, folks that are listening from home on the replay, they hear all the market intel in the background getting exchanged. Yeah. Uh, if you had to pick one thing, I'm just going to go around the panel here. One thing that you've liked the best so far about Connections 2021, what is that? Steve, I'm going to go in reverse order. Oh, okay. Uh, Jeff Foxworthy. Jeff, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> And that session was earlier today. Yes, it was. Uh, was it just jokes, or did he offer up some business and leadership stuff? 90% jokes, but a little bit. Yeah, it was good. It was very good. He did a you great want, job. You want to take a stab at stealing one and share no, it with us? No, I don't. <laughs> Here's your sign. No, I don't. <laughs> All right, thank you very uh -huh. much, Steve. Rob. Yeah, so first I would say getting back to semi-normal. Yeah. And let me just say that, that this is the first, like, normal type large business function I've been to in a year and a half so that for me personally feels good um, and then two would be really just exposure for me to a whole subset of new suppliers and different types of categories right. um, and ultimately making new friends and building new relationships excellent point that's a good one that's a good because that that's been one of mine as much as I've enjoyed the content speakers uh, all the sidebar conversations, the, the, the market intel, uh, sitting down with members of the Omnia Partners team and, and hearing their expertise, that's always a highlight. But to your point, Rob, we have taken a couple of strides to some degree of normalcy and enjoyed, yeah. you know, yucking it up beside you yeah. instead of being on, on Zoom and well, StreamYard and other platforms. I didn't know that I had anybody below <laughs> this point. I'm <laughs> <on> myself, <Yeah. laughs> so... So you're so you got the final one. Well, I um, I, I think it's it is seeing again in person the power of face to face communication of in person discussion um, of the things that you can do over a water cooler or another type of cold beverage um, <laughs> or you know in front of a booth and also the breadth of suppliers here. So I again I'm kind of new to this whole procurement world. Um, but it's fascinating what companies need. I would have never guessed you needed an auto parts connection, right? I know that sounds dumb, especially coming out of auto parts. <laughs> yeah. That sounds particularly dumb. But I, it, but it's really fascinating what you know what people need or companies need access to. Yeah. Agreed. So. All right. Fun conversation. A lot of good stuff here. One big thanks to Rob Stofko and Steve Larada, uh, both with the Omnia Partners. A pleasure. Really enjoyed y'all's time here today. Uh, and really, this is going to wrap up our two two podcasts that we've we've, we've uh, set yeah. up here. Of course, the supply chain buzz streamed live here um, earlier this week. The replay will be dropping really really soon. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed that home run conversation with Paul Noble, yeah, with Verison, and, uh, and Kevin, Kevin Heath, Heath with yeah. uh, Omnia Partners. Uh, stay tuned for the rest. A lot more to come. I can't wait to see all the the content, and the replays that are coming out of Connections 2021. Be sure to check out uh, OmniaPartners.com. Connect with Steve and Rob. 
Yeah, sounds yep, like uh, you'll be remiss if, if you're you don't. an MRO and you're not connected. You're and hey, I'm in Atlanta. You need any short notice fill in guest speakers? <laughs> there you go. I like How about that. I'll fly on down to the studio <laughs> hey, and we'll hey, we'll, we'll offer it in <laughs> we'll offer in in verse. <laughs> That's right. You need a fourth. <laughs> yep. Anytime. <laughs> but, you no, know it. So we're going to wrap on a little challenge. So we want to mention Daniel Stofko, Rob's son, recent graduate of the University of South Carolina. They're growing supply chain program, right. which has yeah. grown dramatically. Uh, and of course, Steve Rubnicki is part of that. Uh, he's an adjunct professor there. I'd love to hear some feedback from current undergrad students who may be newer to the wide world of GPO and TCO and get their take on what Rob and Steve have shared here today. What do you Whoa, think about that? Oh, I like that idea. We'll see if Steve can't help us out there. Yeah, Steve's first well, class. Yeah, they got quite fantastic. a adjunct professor. Okay, so folks, hopefully you've enjoyed this conversation as much as we have. Be sure to check us out, supplychainnow.com. Uh, be sure to connect with Rob and with Steve, and you might want to connect with Greg, too. Your Listen Up yep. features are pretty good three times a week, right? <laughs> yeah. You thanks. like putting those bees in bonnets, and, and I enjoy that as well. But, hey, most importantly, folks, uh, be sure, be sure to do good, get forward, and be the change that's needed. And on that note, we'll see you next time right back here at Supply Chain Up. Got Thanks you that time. You did. <laughs> Thanks for being a part of our Supply Chain Now community. Check out all of our programming at SupplyChainNow.com and make sure you subscribe to Supply Chain Now anywhere you listen to podcasts. And follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. See you next time on Supply Chain Now.